Let's continue with basic wound management part three, alternative wound closure techniques. In this section, we're gonna cover some other considerations in wound closure, like situations where maybe no closure or delayed primary closure is the best option. We're also gonna discuss some of the alternative closure techniques, like use of tissue adhesive tapes, staples, and tissue adhesive glue, and combinations of the above. I think it's really important before you suture any wound to ask yourself, does this wound really need sutures? Because there's a lot of important considerations with regards to wound repair that we haven't talked about. Suturing increases infection risk. Suturing will often require a return visit on the part of the patient to have those sutures removed. And often, suturing doesn't guarantee a better cosmetic outcome for the patient. Take this case, for example. A young girl who I saw, about three years old, who had fallen and hit her face on a bedpost. She had this fairly deep laceration of her upper lip. It abutted, but didn't quite cross the vermilion border. She was obviously very scared to be in the emergency department, and mother was wondering what we needed to do about this wound. If we would, were gonna properly uh, close this wound with anesthetic into the lip and using sutures, it would obviously be a very fearful situation for this young girl, and it may even require the use of procedural sedation. So I took a step back and thought, Mom, what if we just clean this wound and see what happens? So we didn't do any closure that day, and this is how she looked a week later, and admittedly at this point, I was a little nervous about how the wound was gonna ultimately look. But then, this is how the little girl looked one month later. As you see, she's got an almost perfect natural repair of her lip with no more being done in the emergency department than some local wound care and cleaning. So the point I'm making here is that we tend to overtreat a lot of these small lacerations that present to the emergency department that will generally heal fine on their own. And there's even evidence to support the conservative management of some of these lacerations. For example, in the BMJ in 2002, there was an article published by Jim Quinn showing that sometimes small hand lacerations less than two centimeters, probably don't need suturing. What these authors did was they performed a randomized controlled trial where they looked at suturing, the usual treatment of hand lacerations, versus conservative treatment, meaning just local wound care, maybe irrigation and anesthetic. They included only uncomplicated hand lacerations of less than two centimeters. And it's also notable they had multiple exclusion criteria. For example, patients with comorbidities like diabetes or chronic steroid use patients who had evidence of deep injuries like tendon lacerations or vascular injuries. But in their study, what they found is that there was no difference in the cosmetic appearance at three months between wounds that were sutured and wounds that were managed conservatively. Furthermore, the, re the return to activities at an eight to 10 day follow-up visit was the same. But the patients who were sutured experienced more pain and they had a longer ED treatment duration. So this is evidence arguing in favor of the fact that a lot of these small lacerations will probably do just great without any treatment beyond local wound care. Another consideration, when you've got a wound that's really dirty, really contaminated, or maybe presents to you a little bit later where there's been time for bacteria to grow within the wound, sometimes you may be not as comfortable closing a wound like that. In this case, you might make an argument for doing what's called a delayed primary closure. What this means is, at the time the wound presents to you, you want to clean that wound as usual. If you decide that this wound has a high risk of infection for whatever reason, it's acceptable to wait three to five days and have that patient return to you or return to another qualified provider to assess to see if the wound looks okay. If there are no signs or symptoms of infection at that follow-up visit, it would be acceptable at that time to do a primary closure of the wound. Now let's talk about some of the different alternative closure techniques that are out there that you might take advantage of in closing a wound if you want to avoid suturing. One of these methods is the use of adhesive tapes. The advantages of using adhesive tapes are that they're painless to apply, they've got lower risks of infection, and they don't leave that risk of leaving unsightly suture marks. Now the disadvantages are they're not as good for high tension wounds, they are somewhat less durable, and they're really not easy to use on hairy or oily areas of the body. Here's an example of application of adhesive tapes. The first thing you wanna do 
is add a tincture of benzoin or some type of topical uh, ointment to make the skin more tacky and more ready to accept your stereo strips or your adhesive tapes. There are different types and different makes of adhesive tapes. Here we're using stereo strips, but again, there are many different varieties. What you want to do is measure the length of the strip and make sure it's about three centimeters long on either side of the wound. You can cut it down to size. Then you'll peel off the paper backing. And for ease of handling, it's often better to use your pickups to grab the end of the tape so it doesn't get twisted up in your hand. And then apply it across the edges of your wound. You're going to pinch the wound edges with your fingers in order to bring them together and apply the tape. You want to make sure not to apply it to one side and then drag the tape across, which can cause blistering of the skin. You can go ahead and apply these strips across the margins of a wound. And another tip is to apply crossbars like train tracks on either side of the wound uh, where the stereo strips end. This prevents fraying of those edges of the strips and prevents them from prematurely uh, coming off of the wound. And that's an easy way to close a wound under minimal tension. Adhesive tapes can also be used in conjunction with sutures uh, for certain wound types. For example, this patient was elderly with thin, frail skin. It would have been very difficult to place sutures through and through her skin, which was easily going to tear with just suturing alone. So what we did here was use adhesive tape placement first in order to reinforce those thin and fragile skin edges to allow it to more readily accept those sutures, which you're seeing right here in the center of the wound. Another great technique that we often forget to take advantage of is that of staple use. Staples are nice in the sense that they're fast, they're simple to learn, uh, they're great for areas like the scalp or hair bearing areas where it's hard to get your sutures in and hard to see the suture material that you'd be tying. Now the disadvantage of using staples is in some situations or some locations they may be more expensive uh, and less available to some providers. Also, staples carry that same risk that sutures do of leaving staple marks like train tracks on either side of the wound if they're left in for too long. And this is especially more prominent if used on non-hairy areas of the skin or in patients with particularly light skin. Let's review the technique of placing staples within a wound. Firstly, you want to align that arrow with the center of the laceration. You'll then place the stapling device on the wound as you use your fingers to pinch the edges of the wound to evert the edges. You want to deploy those staples at regular intervals and walk your hand down everting the edges as you go. Now properly placed staples should be elevated about one to two millimeters above the skin surface and this is so that when you remove the staples they're easier to get out. Here's a tip, always bring a staple remover with you when you're stapling because in case you misfire you want to have a device available to remove them. All you do is place that staple remover's lower jaw beneath the crossbar and squeeze the handle gently to remove those staples. You'll continue placing the staples across the wound until completion. And that's a nice way to easily close a long laceration. Another great technique you might employ is that of the use of tissue adhesive glue. What's great about tissue adhesive glues is that they can be applied rapidly, they're painless, they serve as their own dressing. They've got antibiotic, antibacterial properties uh, against gram-positive bacteria, so you don't need to apply any additional ointments or dressings beyond it. They slough off on their own after a period of about five to seven days, so there's no need to come in for removal uh, or return visit as, as with sutures. Now the downside is that they may not be as widely available in some areas, and it's certainly more costly than some of the other methods we've discussed. Pictured here is 2-octal cyanoacrylate, which is sort of the prototypical tissue adhesive glue, but recognize there are many different uh, makes of tissue adhesive glue and many different applicators available. Here's an example of tissue adhesive glue application as used at my institution. We're using a product called Dermaflex, but again, there are many different commercial brands and applicators available. Here you see two different heads you can apply, and by screwing that top onto the tube of the Dermaflex. It pierces the tube, and you see the purple colored tissue adhesive glue at the applicator surface. That purple color is going to facilitate droplet placement.
what you're going to do is gently pinch those skin edges together as you apply a thin layer of that adhesive glue across the wound, almost like you're painting the wound. You're going to give that a couple minutes to dry, continuing to hold pressure on the wound with your hand, and you're going to repeat the process applying a second layer of the glue. Ultimately, you're going to apply about three to four total layers of tissue adhesive glue and make sure that you hold those edges of the wound together for at least a minute. That gives you a nice closure of the wound without the use of sutures, staples, without a need for a return visit. There are also ways to use tissue adhesive glue uh, creatively in order to close wounds that you see on hair bearing areas like the scalp. For example, the hair opposition technique is a really great tool for use in children uh, who have longer hair in order to close scalp lacerations. So this young girl had a fairly long scalp laceration. I considered stapling it, but that would have been pretty scary for this young kid. So here's what we did instead. After properly cleaning the wound, we took about five to seven strands of hair on either end of the wound, and then we twisted them around in a clockwise circle without tying. We applied just a drop of tissue adhesive where those twists meet and then held tension there. We then walked down the wound and repeated the process in order to bring those edges together. So as you see, her own hair is acting like embedded sutures within the wound and bringing those edges together. So that's a creative way that you can close a wound without using any sutures. Once the glue dissolves, the hair will naturally unravel and the patient doesn't need to come back in for a return visit for suture removal unless any complication occurs. So that's part three. Just remember, in summary, consider times when no closure may give you an acceptable cosmetic outcome. After all, it's a safer way to go. Also, there's no harm in using a delayed primary closure technique in most situations. You also want to remember alternative closure techniques, like the use of tissue adhesive tapes, plus or minus sutures, the use of staples, and the use of tissue adhesive glue and the hat trick. And that concludes part three of our wound care lecture.